Hello, my name is Lewin, and I'm going to be presenting the solution to double sort. In this problem, we're going to use dynamic programming. The first step is making sure we have the right state representation. In this problem, it happens to be the case that the simplest state representation also works. So in this case, we're going to let dpij be the answer where we choose i numbers and the max is at most j. Uh, and dpij will be length an array of length i. Um, each element in this array corresponds to the, the expected value at that position. The final answer is going to be dpnn, and again, this is a sequence of n different numbers. Next, we'll talk about the transitions. Um, so in this case, it's easier to break down by how many elements in the different sequence are strictly greater than one. So let's say this number is k. Um, this is because uh, once we fix which elements are equal to one, we can kind of ignore them and break down to a smaller subproblem and uh, use that answer to help update our original problem. So one thing we'll need is the probability that this happens. So for now, we'll skip over kind of the details on this. I'll cover that in the next slide. But I want to talk more about how exactly to, to transition. Um, so the way we can do it is we look at the pk j minus i. So the reason is we only k elements can be strictly bigger than one. So those are the only that's like the new i. Those are only uh, that's the number of numbers that we're choosing. Um, and it's j minus i because each element is already at least one. So we're subtracting one for each of those originally. Um, so we can use these answers to update dpij. Um, so the pseudocode is basically all it's doing is it's updating the last k elements of dpij with dpk j minus i. Uh, and this is because these are already in sorted order. So uh, this will maintain that sorted order as we're adding uh, these expected values. Now I'll go, how, go over how to compute the probability. Um, so again, we can restate the problem. We want to know that given that numbers are cho chosen randomly, what's the probability that exactly k of the elements in the different sequence are strictly greater than 1? Um, in this case, we can change this to a counting problem. So we want to count the number of ways that this happens divided by the total number of ways. The total number of ways is very simple. It's just j choose i. Um, that's because uh, we can just choose i numbers from the j elements without any restrictions. Uh, the numerator is a little bit more complicated. It's a product of two different things. One is i choose k. Um, so that is just the number of ways to fix which elements are strictly bigger than one. And the next part is j minus i choose k. And that's just the number of ways to distribute the remaining elements within the k numbers that we've chosen. And yeah, that's kind of all for an implementation. Um, the time complex is n cubed times m. But the constant factor is actually very small because we're not actually iterating through the whole n every single time. Um, it's more like n cubed divided by 6 or something like that. Um, but we may still need some more constant factor optimizations on top of that. So uh, there are a few things you can do. One is compute the DP tables iteratively rather than recursively. Uh, this actually does speed up quite a bit. Um, the next thing you can do is make sure that your DP arrays are shaped so that they're all cache friendly, so you're not getting many cache misses when you're accessing elements. So making sure that your innermost loops are accessing the innermost or like the rightmost indices in your arrays. Um, and the last thing you can also do is just compute binomial coefficients efficiently and just making sure that's not too slow in your implementation. Uh, space complexity is n squared times n. Again, the constant factor is a little bit smaller. Um, yeah, you can look at the just solutions for some more details on how uh, you can implement some of these optimizations.